Today, we're gonna be smoking beef short ribs. Um, they're by far my favorite thing to smoke. Um, my favorite piece of barbecue right now, you know, maybe that'll change one day, but right now, beef short ribs is where it's at. Um, I have this beautiful rack from Snake River Farms that's just super well marbled. It's pretty awesome how well marbled it is. You know this thing's gonna be juicy as well because I don't burn the hell out of it. Um, first off, what we're gonna be doing today with this is trimming it. Uh, anything you see like this, anything loose, skinny, that's just gonna burn up in the smoke, we're just gonna get rid of it. Uh, then there's this layer of fat on top. We're gonna get rid of that as well. And then there's silver skin underneath this fat, which I just always like to get rid of if I can find it. So we're gonna be trimming that off. And there's a membrane underneath this, and the membrane's gonna stay. We're gonna leave that so it can hold all the ribs together it doesn't fall apart while we're cooking because we're gonna cook this nice and tender. You know, uh, it's gonna be up in the 205 to 210 range probably today. Um, after we trim it, the next thing we're gonna be doing is see, by, putting a binder on and seasoning it. Um, for binder, we're gonna end up using just yellow mustard, uh, just a real thin layer to make sure we hold on all of our seasoning. And then we're doing kind of a Central Texas style uh, smoke today. So we're starting off with um, Franklin barbecue brisket spice rub. Uh, it's just salt pepper, so it's super simple. You can combine your own at home or you can do what I did. I, I got some because I wanted to try it. Uh, also, we're gonna be using hickory. I don't have post oak like they use down in Central Texas, but it'll have to do for what I got. Um, so yeah, and then after we season it, we'll be throwing it onto the smoker at about 250 degrees. Uh, it'll cook probably nine hours or so because it's about a nine pound set of ribs. Once we get this rack of ribs onto the smoker, the first thing we're gonna do is just let it smoke for three hours straight. I'm not gonna touch this thing at all. I'm not gonna open up the lid and mess with it. You know, unless something's happening in the smoker I can't control and I, I need to adjust something, then, then maybe we'll get in there. But otherwise, you just let this thing smoke for the first three hours, then we go and check on it. Um, by that time, we'll probably be spritzing with apple cider vinegar and uh, 50, 50 50 mixture with water. Um, after we spritz it, we we'll probably keep spritzing it every 30 to 45 minutes just to make sure that none of the edges are drying up on this because you don't, you don't want to ruin this thing. This thing is a beautiful cut of meat. Uh, after that, we'll keep doing that until probably the six to seven hour mark, I imagine. At that point, I meant the bark on this should be starting to set and be nice, dark, kind of mahogany color, maybe a little bit darker. Um, uh, and then after that bark is set and everything seems to be rendered, all the fat seems to be rendering, we're gonna wrap it in pink butcher paper. After wrapping these beef short ribs, I like to throw them right back on the smoker. Um, it's probably gonna take another three hours for me to cook this. If you have a little bit smaller rack of ribs, it's probably gonna take that on closer to two. One way you're gonna be able to tell that these ribs is done is by sticking a meat thermometer into the meat and poking around, and you'll just be able to tell that there's no resistance in there. Um, you will definitely wanna poke towards the center because that'll be the last spot to uh, get tender. Um, another way is, you know, if this meat is gonna start, once it's tender, to be able to jiggle, it'll be really flexible kind of seeming. And then that'll be a good sign that your, your meat's ready to come off the smoker. If you really like to keep track of your meat and know where it's at at all times, um, I personally do. I always like to use my meter block probes. Uh, they're super reliable, durable. Uh, they tell you the ambient temperature, the internal temperature, and they always seem really consistent as to when the meat's done. And you don't have to, just something I like to do. You can use wired probes, you know, whatever you like to do to make sure you always build the temperature of your meat. Right, one thing I always make sure to do when trimming any piece of meat is I try to keep one hand is the meat hand. You know, I only will touch the meat with this one hand. This one I try to keep clean so that I can touch all my tools, you know, like my knife or my seasoning. So this one, just keep one hand dirty, unless you're wearing gloves, you know, then put a, wearing gloves, that's probably best to keep your hands cleanest. Um, and trimming it, I didn't mention before, I'm gonna be getting rid of this fat, this hard fat here. And if you can see it here, there's, look right here, kind of there. You can see some silver skin. It's all underneath this fat here. So we're removing all that and we're removing any of this 
real thin stuff. This stuff's just not gonna cook right. It's gonna burn and you don't want that any smoker. So we'll be getting rid of that. Maybe some little pieces like that that'll fall right off and burn up. Um, and then there's a membrane underneath. And like I said before, we're not gonna cut that off or try peeling that off. That'll stay. It'll help protect our ribs from burning on the bottom side. So let's get started. Um, I like to use a boning knife. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites. It's doll strung. It's the Valhalla series. And uh, I don't know. I just love the way the Valhalla series looks. All right. So first up, I'm just going to start getting rid of some of this little small stuff. Got rid of all of this down the side. It's all really thin and this is all going to burn up. You just leave it there. That's looking pretty good. Now we'll start working away this way. Try not to get too deep into the meat. You know, you don't want to cut big chunks of meat off of this thing. I don't know if you can see it better now, but I kind of actually cleared up some of the silver skin here. That just makes your meat tough, and I I like to always get rid of it. I don't. As you can see, I'm leaving some of this fat behind. Uh, the reason is it's kind of what cons people consider pillowy fat, where it's kind of got a softer texture than like this hard, smooth fat. Um, so I don't mind leaving that on. It ends up rendering down and just making your meat that much juicier. Now, to get this silver skin up, I like to just dig my knife in just a little bit across. And you just pull up, just try to stay as close to that silver skin as possible. That way you're not cutting into the meat itself. That's pretty, that's pretty thin. I got a little more meat that I like there, but some of it's pretty close. And I don't know if you can tell right here, but this is just looking, this marbling is just fantastic. Let's get back to trim it. All right. Now I'd say this thing is done. Uh, there's no more trimming that needs to be done. I'm gonna leave this fat on that's right there. It's looking really good. Now we're gonna throw on our binder and our seasoning to this. As you can see, we got this beef. All right, this beef short rib is all trimmed up and ready. This beef short rib is all trimmed up and ready to get the binder on it and our seasoning. First up. Just regular yellow mustard, you use hot sauce, you can use whatever you feel like, this is just what I'm doing. Just a little bit. Throw her around. Don't need to get too thick with this layer. Now it's time to use Franklin's Barbecue Brisket Spice Rub. Um, I like to shake it up a little bit. It seems like the uh, salt and pepper uh, settle a little differently. All right, now I'm gonna be pretty generous with this because it's such a thick piece of meat. It's hard to over season and I always find. So just get all your sides.
Just remember when seasoning, always keep it as even as possible so that none of the meat is over seasoned or under seasoned. Just try to keep it as even as possible so you get the best flavor throughout the whole thing. All right, put a little bit in there. All right, now this beef, all right, this rack of beef sherbs is looking mighty fine. We're gonna go, you know, kind of just pat some of the seasoning in. We're gonna let this sit for about 20, 30 minutes while our we warm up our smoker. All right, for the meat probes, I always like to make sure that the point of it is as close to the center as possible or where it's thickest, just cause that's gonna be the last place that it gets tender and we wanna make sure the whole thing is cooked all the way throughout just right. All right, there we go, we got that in there. We're gonna go get our smoker started. This is gonna sit for about 20, 30 minutes while the smoker heats up. For our beef short ribs today, we're gonna to be smoking on my Pit Boss. I use a Pit Boss Pro Series 1600 wood pellet grill. All right, as you can see right now, my pit boss is set for smoke. We're gonna set it all the way up to 250. Well, hard to see, it doesn't want to quite read the video, but 250, whatever, get up to temp. All right, our pit boss is up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we put our beef short ribs on just now, and don't forget to add in a uh, water pan, to add in extra moisture to the uh, cooking chamber. It'll also help keep things from burning up on your beef short ribs. All right, let's let it cook for three hours before we check up on it. I've only been out on the smoker with my ribs for three hours, and they're already pulling way back on the bone, both sides. I've been smoking at 250. It's only been three hours, and this thing is already at 179 degrees, which has never happened to me before. This, ribs are going to get done way sooner than what I was expecting so that's kind of a nice surprise because the Minnesota winters are normally take an hour or two longer than you would expect and even here if you check it that is rendering it's squishing in it's not just bouncing back if it's not rendered it'll just bounce back and you won't be able to push into the meat so All right, something pretty crazy happened here. I think my ribs pretty much skipped the stall point, which is normally in the 160 range. It seems like they'll sweat out for a long time and take forever to jump up in temperature. But right now, after three hours, it's 180 degrees internal for my ribs, which is something that normally never happens. So I'm really liking the color right now. Um, that seems to be quite rendered already. And so I think I'm already gonna wrap these ribs. Uh, normally I wouldn't do this till probably like the six hour mark because that's when they're normally out of the stall in the 170-ish range, 175 range, which is normally where I'd wrap them. So we're just gonna do it right now and show you how this done. All right, so we're gonna lay like two layers of the pink butcher paper. Make it quite long. Sometimes you'll see that this paper just folds up. I like to put something heavy on it. For the moment, we lose our meter block. All right, so our we got our pink butcher paper laid out and our beef short ribs are at 180 degrees internal. So we're gonna take them off the smoker and we're gonna wrap them up real quick. Just 
just a quick note, I mean, even without spritzing at all, these things are still super juicy looking. And so we're not gonna spritz them or add any beef towel. We're just gonna wrap them, put them back on the smoker and let them keep going. We're gonna keep the meter probe in as well. Keep those edges folded in. Keep that as tight as possible and wrap it in. Little bit too long, so I'm just gonna park it on in there and it'll be just fine. Now I'll just set these back on the smoker. All right, as you can see, I got my ribs back on the smoker. Um, same spot and everything. Just gonna keep meat side up like usual, and we're just gonna let these smoke now for probably two to three hours, is what I'm guessing it'll finally take to get these all the way to the, about the 205 mark or so. My beef short ribs just hit 205 degrees internal they're feeling super tender no resistance when i stick a meat thermometer inside there and uh so now we're gonna let it rest and then cut into them and show you how great they are so as you know this cook was a little different um i was expecting to have spritzed my uh, beef short ribs a couple times and uh that ended up not happening because uh, when i went to check on it after the three hour mark my ribs were already starting to have the fat render and they're pretty much ready to wrap and they're still moist. There's nothing was dried out, so there's no need to spritz it. Um, and they took about six and a half hours to cook, which was pretty much three hours sooner than I was expecting. But they're done now. I let them rest, and it's time to cut them open. So let's check them out. Right, as you can see these ribs are looking great some nice color to them and they're nice and nice and flexible probably could pull the bones right out but we're gonna leave them so I like to eat them with the bones in get a nice large slicing knife always comes in handy especially with brisket let's check her out All right, I have the bat, nice and tender, looking super juicy. Oh yeah, lots of juice flowing out of there. Oh, yeah. So these ribs are looking great. Um, nice little smoke ring in there. Bark's looking great. Things are looking great. So we're gonna give it a try. Mm. That's excellent. You know, it doesn't get much better than beef short ribs. All right, so as you can see, these things are super tender, full of flavor, and uh, just juicy as can be. If you want to check out more recipes of mine, you can go out to Josh's Cookhouse or nothing's off the table. See you next time.